uh, truly counted an honor and a privilege to be able to be before you. Um, didn't the wor worship team do an awesome job today of leading us to the throne of the Lord? Uh, if you would indulge me just for a minute. Again, my name is Pastor Marvin. I am the worship pastor here. And I just want to say to you, I just want to say to you how grateful I am that you have welcomed me and my family here at Walk. We've been here about six months now, and uh, um, I just want you to know that we love you greatly because you loved us first. I may not get another opportunity like this to say that, so I want to declare that to you today, that my family loves Walk Church because you loved us first, and so we're grateful for that. So um, if you wouldn't mind indulging me uh, in going to God's Word, Acts chapter 18, Acts chapter 18. Uh, have you been blessed with the uh, uh, Christmas story series that we've been going through, God with us? Come on, give a hand to Pastor Hyden. Uh, he is not with us today, uh, but we love him greatly. He has done a phenomenal job in sharing with us and giving us a glimpse of God being with us through the lenses of Joseph through the lenses of Mary, through the eyes of the wise men, and giving us a glimpse of what that looks like for them to know that God is with us. And a common theme that was um, throughout each one of those character stories uh, was that the angel would show up and said, don't be afraid, don't be scared, fear not. Why? Because God is with us. Emmanuel, God with us. And on Monday, you know, we celebrated Christmas. Uh, we opened some gifts with some family. Uh, we sang some songs, ate some good food. I watched the uh, 49ers lose to the Ravens. Uh, go Cowboys. Uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, so it was a great time. But for some of us, Christmas Day was not that joyous. You've experienced some great loss, whether it be a loved one, whether it be a spouse, family. Um, even this week, we got uh, a couple of messages of people who were just suddenly taken this week. And so in this season for you, it hasn't been as joyous. But I want you to know something. God is with you, too. And he wants to revive that joy in your heart, revive that joy in you. And so um, as we close out 2023 uh, and as we close out this God with us series, uh, we just want to reflect on the great grace of God and what he has done. Did you know that tomorrow is 2024? <laughs> I didn't know if you knew that, but tomorrow is 2024. We get to say goodbye to 2023, and for some of y'all, if you like me, I'm happy to say goodbye to 2023. But I am joyous that we get to step into, we get to transition into 2024 because we realize that God is with us, and we get to see God moving in so many different ways. And so uh, I am thankful for that. Uh, this series has been incredible. We've seen Joseph, Mary, and the wise men. But I'm from the neighborhood. Can I be truthful with you? Cousin Joe, can I be truthful with you, Cousin Joe? Because we right here, Cousin Joe. As I look at Mary and as I look at Joseph and as I, I look at the wise men and I see what God is doing in their lives, and I'm a little jealous because I say, God, what about me? God, you did some incredible things, and man, how you just stepped in and how you just you just, just blessed them and you ministered to them. But what about me? I'm dealing with a lot of things. I, I, I got a lot of things going on, but God, what about me? And so today I pray that uh, as we dive into God's word today, that he would speak to you as he spoke to me. Uh, we're going to go into Acts chapter 18, if you have it. Uh, say amen. If you don't, say wait on me. 
Acts chapter 18. Would you indulge me? Would you stand with me? I'm going to verse 9, Acts chapter 18. We're going to do verses 1 through 11, but I want to jump to verse 9 through 11 because I think God has something special for us in that. Um, And it reads like this. And the Lord said to Paul one night in a vision, do not be afraid. Let me say that one more time. Do not be afraid, but go on speaking and do not be silent, for I am with you. For I am with you. And somebody needs to hear that. Somebody needs to experience that. God is saying that, for I am with you. And no one will attack you to harm you, for I have many in this city who are my people. And he stayed a year and six months teaching the word of God among them. Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We, your sons and your daughters, we stand in awe of you. So now, would you allow the words that fall from my lips be the words that fall from your heart for us, your sons and your daughters. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may take your seats. You may take your seats. Um, as we start this, this, this text in verses 1, uh, we find that Paul is journeying to Corinth. And if we want to do justice to the story, we got to give you a little backdrop. In chapter 17, Paul is in a few other cities. In chapter 17, he has been preaching. He has been on what we call a preaching tour. He's been an evangelist. He's been out on the road. And he's been preaching and teaching. He was in Thessalonica, and then he goes to Berea. And in Thessalonica and in Berea, he uh, encounters some problems, some situations. Some people are trying to kill him, trying to take him out. And so he leaves Thessalonica, he leaves Berea, and he journeys over to Athens. And in Athens, Athens is known to be a city where you have a lot of theologians, a lot of philosophers, a lot of people, a lot of what, 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 what we would call hoity-toities. <laughs> and, 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 you know, they, they get like this right here, and they got millions of degrees on the wall. And so he goes to that area, and he begins to preach God's word. And the Bible tells us that as he's preaching, some people hear them and they've never heard this word before. And the philosophers, they say, yo, 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 you need to to come with us. And so they take him in front of a group of philosophers. The the word is called Arapagus, Arapagus. I'll get it right next week. And, and, and in that space, that's an area in the town in Athens where all the philosophers gather to reason with one another. And the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 17, let me give you this real quick. Acts chapter 17, verses 22 and 23, and it reads like this. So Paul, standing in the midst of, there it is right there, Areopagus, said, men of Athens, don't you laugh at me, (laughs) men of Athens, I perceive that in every way you are very religious, for I passed along and observed the objects of your worship. I want you to catch that. The objects of your worship. He passed them as they were coming in, so we knew it wasn't God. Mm. I found also an altar with this inscription, to the unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. And the God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man. Paul is saying to them in this, in this instance, you have brought me before you, but I want to give you, you got all the intelligence in the world. You got all the knowledge in the world. But what you do not know is the one thing that you should know, and that's God Almighty. You need to know who he is. And I come by and I stop by to tell you, just like Paul stopped by to tell them, that God is here and he's ready to meet you at your point of need. And so they hear him teaching and he begin to talk to me and say, hey, the God that you, you say the unknown, that's the God that I know. That's the God that I love. That's the God that I serve. That's the God that I want to talk to you about. Matter of fact, I want to tell you so much about him that if you would just listen, you would receive him today. And they begin to get angry with him. And now you, if you know anything about Paul, as we read the stories about Paul, Paul was always getting beat up. He was always getting tossed out of the cities, run out. He just was a troublemaker. Everybody say troublemaker. And he's starting some trouble here. But I call it good trouble. 
I call it good trouble. He's declaring the truth and the word of God. And so the guy says, hey, we don't like what you got to say. So they begin to mock him. But off in the distance, there's a few people who are listening. And they begin to listen a little bit closer and they get a little bit closer and they hear the great news of God and they receive it and believe. God's word would never turn void. And so as Paul leaves Athens, he journeys into Corinth. And that's where we pick up our story today in Acts chapter 18, verses 1 through 11. If I could title this message anything, it would be God with us now. Look at somebody and say, God with us now. Come on, look at somebody else and say, God with us now. God with us now. If you're anything like me, sometimes you think God is off in the peripheral. You think God is way off over there. He's just going to help somebody else. But I'll stop by to let you know today that God is with us now. He wants to be with you in the moments right now. Now, the definition of the word now, the definition of the word now, I like it. It says this, at the present time or moment. God, are you going to be with me in the present time? God, will you be with me in this moment right now? And sometimes in my heart, as we're journeying out of 2023, going into 2024, our heart is leaping. God, are you going to be with me? And God says, I am with you now. And so my first point I would love to share with you today is that God is with us. Now, in our transitions and our trades, God with us now in our transitions and our trade. Read with me in verses one through three. And after this, Paul and after this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth and he found a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla because Claudius had commanded all Jews leave Rome. And when he seen them and he went to see them and because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them and worked for they were tent makers by trade. The Bible says that Paul is leaving Athens because the people are trying to run him out of town. And uh, Aquila and Priscilla are leaving their area because the people have run him out of town. They're in transition. I don't know what your transition is today, but for them, their transition was moving from another place where they were not familiar. And God wants to meet you in your transition today. Some of you are transitioning on your job. Some of you are transitioning in relationships. Some of you are transitioning out of a relationship. Some of you are transitioning uh, 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 in your community. Some of you are transitioning in your mind. You're wrestling every day. And God says, I am with you now. And not only is he with us in our transitions, he says he's with us in our trade. Uh Uh-oh, watch this right here. Your trade is your job, your career, how you support yourself, how, how, how you make a living. And most of us, we think of our job is separate from our life from living with the Lord. Mm-mm, I'm stepping on somebody's toes right there. I know you're mad with me. I know you're mad with me. We go to our job and we clock in and we clock out. And we don't want nobody to know on our job that we are followers of Christ. We don't want no one to know, not what we say, not what we do, not how we eat, not what we look at. No, no, no. We want to fit in. But the Bible tells us, That God is calling us to a higher standard. He is not giving you that job just to make some money. He is giving you that job to be a missionary in a mission field. If we would look at our jobs in a different manner, we would go with a little bit more excitement. Even though we know that that boss doesn't like us. Even though we know our co-worker hates us. Even though we know we got a hard workload. But I'm here because God has sent me on a mission for this place. Now, me being on a mission on this place, I'm going to let you know this right now. Me being on a mission, on, I'm not going to stand at the door every week and say, hey, the Bible says. <laughs> no, 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 no. Me being a missionary on that job means I'm going to be there on time. I'm going to do my job at a level of excellence. I want them to know that I, I serve something bigger than, hey, you are benefiting from me serving the Lord. And so in my trade, I give this to you, God. I offer my trade, my job, my gift to you. So God is with us in our transition. 
and in our trade. But God is also with us, watch this right here, in our testimony. Everybody has a testimony. If you are a follower of Christ, everyone has a testimony. My question to you today is, are you sharing that with anybody? Verses 4 and 5, watch this right here. Watch what Paul does right here, verses 4 and 5. We got it right here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and tried to persuade Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy arrived from Macedonia, Paul was occupied with the word, testifying to the Jews that the Christ was Jesus. He worked Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Sunday was his Sabbath. You know what he's doing? He's telling somebody about it. He didn't say this. You know what? It's, it's Pastor Hyden's job. <laughs> That's Pastor Marvin's. Uh, the, the pastoral team, they'll tell everybody about Jesus. I don't have to do it. No, no, no. He was burdened for the hearts of those who did not know the Lord. And so every opportunity that he got, he was sharing his testimony. He was sharing the truth of Christ. I want to tell you today, God wants to use your testimony. Yeah. God wants to use who you are and what you've gone through and how he redeemed you for someone else. Yes. I love this right here, Brother Teddy. It says his boys, Silas and Timothy, arrived. When his boys arrived, they found him doing what? Testifying of the Lord. What are we? Uh, uh, I know y'all about to get mad with me right now. I know you're about to get mad with me. Are you sharing the gospel or are you sharing gossip? Paul was about God's business. He wasn't thinking about what somebody had or what somebody didn't have. He was concerned about their souls. And too many of us, we're concerned about something that is frivolous. All right? You need to be concerned about somebody who does not know the Lord. Are you willing to share your testimony with somebody? I was an alcoholic. I was a dope dealer. I was a Muslim. I was a pimp. I was out in the streets. But God, somebody say, but God. Somebody say, but, but God saved me. And in him saving me, he turned me around and put me on a new path. Somebody needs to hear your testimony. Somebody needs to know that you were this way and you were that way. And I'm going to tell you this real quickly. I want to tell you this real quickly. For some of you, you don't have a crazy story like me. You know what? Your testimony is even greater that God has kept you from a youth. That God has given you godly parents to grow up in that homely house. God has blessed you to be able to walk with him and you came to know him early. Too many people want this, this, they, they want this drag out story that God had to pull them from the gutter. And they think that's the only way you'll be able to share your testimony. No, 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 no. That's my testimony, but that's not your testimony. God wants you to share your testimony. God is with us now in our testimony. He wants to use you. See, the thing about it, we compartmentalize our lives so much that we'll turn God on here, then we'll turn him off here. We'll turn him on here, then we'll turn him off here. But God is saying to you today, I want to be God with you now. Now means in every situation, in your transitions, in your trade, in your testimony. Oh, it's about to get good right now, Brother Teddy. Oh, it's about to get good. And my final point I want to share with you right this way. Mm, 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 mm. This is going to taste good right here. God with us in our troubles and triumphs. Yes. Yes. If you're anything like me, and I'm looking at some of y'all, and I know some of y'all like me. If you're anything like me, God, did you forget about me? I'm troubled today. And then soon God fixes it. I'm over here and I forget about it. Or are you the opposite? God, you don't hear nothing from me. You ain't even talking to me. And did you go over here? God. And you stop right there. You don't give him thanks for what he has done. See, you're either or. You can't be both. 
And God tells us in this scripture as we're getting ready to read that he wants to be with you in your troubles and in your triumph. He doesn't want to turn this relationship off. Hey, I'm going to ask you something. Right? If you're in a relationship, if you're married, if you've got a girlfriend, a fiance or something like that, oh, you're just, you're just seeing somebody. you got your eyeball on somebody. <laughs> How great would that relationship be if you only talk to them once a week? How great would that relationship be if you only talk to them when you needed something? God is trying to express to you, hey, I want to be there for you in all situations and at all times. Verses number six it says this. And when he opened and when he and when they opposed and reviled him, he shook out his garments and said to them, your blood be on your head. I am innocent for now on. I will go to the Gentiles. What Paul is saying when he says he's going to shake off his garment, he's referring to what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 10. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 10, verses 14 and 15. Do we have that up? Oh, we've got it up on the screen. Here we go. And if anyone will not receive you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet when you leave that house or town. Truly, I say to you, it will be more bearable on the day of judgment for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah than for them. God is saying it's better for it's, it, it's going to be better for Sodom and Gomorrah than it is going to be for them for not receiving wow. my word. But this is what I love about it. It's not up to me who will receive it. <laughs> it's not up to me. My job is to go, is to share, is to tell, is to give. It's not up to me who will receive and how they will receive it. That's up to God. But the Bible says he encounters, they oppose him, they, they, they revile him. There's a problem going on. Hey, I, I'm going to ask you this question. Now, it could be just me. Could be just me. All right, just could be just me. Do you have anybody that's been in your life who's always starting some trouble? Yeah. Yeah. I know, maybe, maybe in college. Maybe, you know, you, you, go, you go to a party and you just turn around. They're going to tell me again. You're at the barbecue and everything is going and going, then you just look over. Oh, here come Aunt Sheila. <laughs> Do you got anybody in your life that is always, you, I, I think in, in, my, in my spiritual, you know, uh, imagination, I think that's how Paul boys were. We, 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 we don't been in Thessalonica, we've been in the Berea, we've been to Athens, we in Corinth, we ought to be. Paul, are you serious? <laughs> but this is this what I want you to understand. Even though Paul was getting in all kinds of troubles, it never stopped him. The trouble that he was facing never stopped. As a matter of fact, when he faced trouble, this is what he did in this text right here. In Matthew, he reverted to God's word. My question to you, are you going to God's word or are you going to something else when you fall in some trouble? Are you going to God or are you going to your friends when you're facing something difficult? Are you going to God or are you going to something else when things are good? I got this, uh, got this iPhone here. Now, if I drop this, did it break? And that phone breaks. I'm going to have to say, hey, sweetie, I dropped my phone. Um, can you take it to the Android store and get it fixed? You think they can fix it? Why? I can't hear you. Why? They didn't create it. They didn't design it. They don't have the blueprint for this. But if I take this phone to Apple, they can fix it. I want to tell you something right now. Instead of going to alcohol, instead of going to that house and this house, instead of going from relationship to relationship, instead of going to on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and, and Micmoc and all those kind of things, why don't you go to God? He is your creator. He is one that designs you. He is one that he created. He knows every hair on your head. And I got a lot of hair on my head. But he knows it all. So why would I go to something or someone else instead of going to God in my trouble? God is with us in our trouble. Paul responds. I love this right here. I got a reality statement I want to share with you real quickly. Got a reality statement I want to share with you real quickly. Respond. Don't react. Say it with me. Respond. Don't react. Have you ever heard of a reaction team? You have? A reaction team? Now, have you heard of a response team? 
Yeah, yeah, response. See, see, that's most people think. It's like, yeah, re- reaction. No, re- no, no, response, response, response. You have never heard of a reaction team. A response team, they have been trained for years to know how to deal with certain situations. The police officers, uh, uh, EMTs, firemen, and during COVID, it was the grocery clerks. <laughs> come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Them grocery clerks was in there. Chick, chick. <laughs> Hallelujah. But all those people were trained to deal with situations. But someone who reacts, they just go into it blindly in emotion and feeling. And nine times out of ten, they make it worse. My question to you, are you going to be a responder to God's word or a reactor to what Satan does? You'll catch that next week. Are you going to be a responder to what God has said throughout all of his word, through every page of this? God has given us instructions of how to live our life and what to do and when to come to me. He has given us that. Will we respond to this and live our life through this or will we just react and make things worse? God is with us in our Troubles and in our triumphs. Verses number 7 through 11. I'm getting ready to close. And they, and he left there and went to the house of a man named Titius. See, y'all thought it was Titus, but it's not. It's Titius. That's how you got to say his name too. Titius. Appreciate that. That's it. That, Titius. That's how you got to say his name. I said that earlier, and one of my homeboys sent me a, a video. Uh, you remember Martin when he was, um, uh, 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 what's, the, uh, what's the guy with the gold tooth in his mouth there? Uh, Jerome, Jerome in the house. He sent me that picture. He's like, that's Titius right there. <laughs> but Titius, a worshiper of God, he was a worshiper. We find him worshiping, and his house was next door to the synagogue. Crispus, the ruler of the synagogue, believed in the Lord together with his entire household. And many of the Corinthians hearing Paul believed and were baptized. Guess what? God is still doing things in the midst of your trouble. He is still with you. He is still working. He is still wanting to use who you are in the midst of your trouble. God sometimes calms the storm, but other times he just calms his child. What are you frustrated about? What, are you, what is the anxiety that's overtaking you right now that God can't minister to you? God wants to use you. Even in my trouble, God wants to use me. But I love this right here. Verse number nine. We read it earlier. This is my, oh, it's about to get good right here. And the Lord said to Paul. Now, let, 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 I want you to hear that now. And the Lord said to Paul. It didn't say the angel said. It didn't say Pastor Marvin said. It didn't say Pastor Hyden said it. It didn't say the president of the United States. It didn't say the governor of Nevada. It says the Lord said. Now, I'll hear you. I'll hear you. But when God speaks, I can stand on what he has to say. And the Lord said to Paul, one night in a dream, do not. Don't be afraid. Where have we heard that before? Many times over this course of this Christmas story. Do not be afraid. But now I'm going to give you a reason why he's telling them not to be afraid. Watch this right here. Go on speaking and do not be silent for I am with you. Read that with me again. For that I am, that I am is with you. That's why I can jump. That's why I can be excited because the I am, that I am is with me. God is with me now in my circumstances, now in my problems, now in my triumphs, now on my job, God is with me. And I can stand on that. See, you know what? You may turn your back on me. And I've been in ministry long enough to know that some of you will turn your back. You may decide that Pastor Marvin is not good enough for you anymore. And so you may turn that that button off. But God will never turn me off. I want to tell you this today. That if you would allow God to be in every moment of your life. God with us in my transition and my trade, my job, my career. 
God with us now in my testimony, my declaring of who he is, because I know he's with me. God with us now in my troubles and in my triumphs. God wants to be with you now. Not tomorrow, although he's already at tomorrow. Not next week, although he's already there. For some of you, you need the now. Somebody say now. now. You need the now. You need the now in your heart. This is what I love about God. I got a reality statement I'm going to give you, and then we get ready to close here. The enemy will isolate you, but God will insulate. The enemy tries to cut you off from everything about God, everything about relationships, everything so he can destroy you, so he can get you down, so you can think you're all by yourself. But the Bible tells us that when Paul got to the city, Jesus, Jesus tell him, yo, you're not here by yourself. I got some other people that are here with you, my brother. I got some other people that are standing on the wall with you. You're not alone. You don't have to walk this road by yourself. God is with us now. And so God uses insulation. He pulls, come here, Brother Teddy, come here, come here, come here, quick, 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 quick. I know you're an athlete. Come on, jump on the stage right here. This is what God does. He pulls you close. <laughs> yeah. And then he does this. He walks with you. Some of you are walking by yourself, and God is saying you don't have to do that. I am with you now. But the problem comes in, Brother Teddy, is that we think that we can do it on our own. And God has never called you to be a long ranger Christian. He has designed the body of Christ for us to do life together. As he instructed Paul, Paul been getting beat up and run out of town, all this guy, and he's in another city. He's like, it's the same thing happened again. I'm here by myself. But he sends him a Priscilla and Aquila. He sends him a Titus and I mean Timothy and Silas. He sends some people his way to let him know that you're not here by yourself. I got you. And let's walk this road together. Let's walk this road together. And so to you today. As I close, I don't know what transition you're in. I don't know what your job looks like. I don't know what that testimony that you have. I don't know the problems and, 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 and the triumphs that you got in your life. But I want to tell you, God with us now in all things. And if God is with me, as he told Paul, for I am with you, I can trust that. You might can't trust me all the time. I might can't trust you all the time, but I can trust God every time. Amen. Yes. And to you today, Pastor Hyden has given us a reality statement that we've been using over the last couple of weeks. Would you put that on the screen for me? And he's wanted you to understand this. And I want to get this in your spirit today as we close out this God with us series. This is very important. God with us is a reality to experience not just a statement to read. And the only way you're going to do that if you let him be a now God. Now God. I'm hurting. Now. I'm confused. Now. I'm struggling. Now. I don't know what's happening. Would you allow God to be a now God in your life? Yes. And for some of you, just like the, 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 the Athenians who the, were at the Grand Council worshiping an unknown God, on your heart, you don't know who he is. You're worshiping everything else because you think that's going to be your God. But God wants you to know today that he wants to be your God. And so for you in here today, if you do not know him, I would that you would pray this prayer with me. Now, understand this. This prayer doesn't make anything magical happen. There's no fairy dust going to come out of the sky and somebody's going to hit you with a magic wand or anything like that. But what's going to happen is that your heart will be tendered and open towards the Lord to receive what he has. If I have something in my hand and I hold it tight like this, I can't get anything or receive anything. But when I open, can receive whatever 
is being given to me. Today, would you open your heart and would you repeat this prayer after me? Father, I'm a sinner. I'm broken. And I need you now. God, would you help me? Would you change my life? Would you change my heart? Would you be the Lord and Savior of my life? I give you my heart today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. If you have prayed that prayer today, oh man, we're oh, so, heaven is rejoicing. There's a party going on in heaven right now. There's a celebration going on in heaven if you have prayed that prayer today. And if you have prayed that prayer today, we would love to meet you up here. Everything that we shared in that message was for one thing. Because we want you to know that you can trust God. When you can't trust me, when you can't trust yourself, you can trust God. So would you stand with us all over the building? This altar is going to be open. The worship team is getting ready to, 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 to sing a, a song. And we're going we're gonna to just worship the Lord for a few minutes. But if you have a need and you want to do a little bit of business with God right here, I want to let you know today. I trust in God. My Savior, the one who will never fail. Woo. He will never fail. Come on, I trust in God. I trust in God, my Savior, my King. My Savior, the one who will never The altar is open for you today. God, would you minister to our hearts? Make known your great grace in Jesus' name.